This is a tutorial on the National Instruments Elvis Suite of Virtual Instruments. To begin, select the instrument launcher from your desktop. In this course, you will use three virtual instruments, the digital multimeter, the function generator, and the oscilloscope. This tutorial will cover the function generator and the oscilloscope. This is the function generator. It has three waveform settings, sine, triangle, and square. You can vary the frequency by turning the radio dial or entering a value in the box. Similarly, you can change the amplitude with the dial or the box and the DC offset. The function generator has two output channels, analog output zero and analog output one. Be sure to connect to the correct pins on the proto board. When you're ready to output a signal, select run. Stop to stop outputting a signal. This is the oscilloscope. Currently, I have it connected to the function generator so that when I select run, we can see what the function generator is outputting. Notice that the signal is not stable. This is because it is not triggering. If we change the type to edge, we can trigger off of a rising or a falling edge. The oscilloscope looks for an incoming signal that in this case is rising at zero volts. We can change the level of the trigger. And as we do, you'll notice that the red line moves up. It's gone higher than the level of our signal. And so therefore it can't find an edge to trigger off of anymore. The red line always has to be within the waveform. Notice that we have two channels, analog input zero and analog input one. These are differential inputs. So be sure to connect between for analog input zero, zero plus and zero minus on your proto board. We can enable and disable our signals and we can change the scale on them. Currently, each of these little boxes is one volt high. We can change it to 500 millivolts, etc. We can also change the vertical position of our signal and the time for division. We can do this to zoom in on a signal. To take measurements, we can use the cursors by selecting cursor on. We have two cursors, cursor one and cursor two. Currently, we're not using channel one, so let's set that to channel zero two. We can then move the cursors and you see that they track the waveform. We can use this to take measurements. Say for instance, we wanted to know the peak to peak voltage of the signal, we could set one cursor at the bottom and the other at the top of the signal, and then look at the difference between them. We can see that they're about one volt difference. So our waveform is about one volt peak to peak. We can also measure the time difference between the cursors. Another way to take measurements is to use a log file. To create a log, select stop and log and save your file somewhere useful. Log files can be difficult to work with though, because they record the day, month, year, hours, minutes, and seconds. So there's a lot of data to go through. If you connect your virtual instruments to your circuit and don't find what you're looking for, you can always try connecting them directly together as I've done here to ensure that you understand how your virtual instruments work. 